Hi everyone, I'm Maddie Cole. I'm the founder of the Flexbo event series where we connect experienced hires with employers and opportunities that are open to flexible working. I'm joined today by two employees from Sir Robert McAlpine. Now Sir Robert McAlpine, I'm sure most of you have heard of the, um, is, a, is a household name, you've probably seen their branding on hoarding all over the UK. Um, Sir Robert McAlpine have supported the events since the launch last year. They're really passionate about flexible working. They're really passionate about diverse and inclusive workforces and they believe that flexible working is the key to achieving that. We'd really like to um, introduce you to two people today who can really showcase what the construction industry is all about, why Sir Robert McAlpine is a great place to work and, and how to make, really make flex work for you in an industry that previously it was completely alien to. Um, so I'd like to introduce, if I may, um, Claire Mullen, who's actually on maternity leave at the moment, and we've managed to pull her in to get her time. Um, so Claire is a chief engineer at Sir Robert McAlpine. Hi, Claire. Hi there. Um, and then I'm also joined by Alison Cox, who has a very long title, which I'm going to check so I don't get it wrong. So Alison is the executive director of engineering and technical services. Um, hi, hi, Alison. Thank you both very much for joining us. Hi. And Alison and I have coordinated our outfits, which um, I forgot to let Claire know about the yellow, <laughs> yellow shirt memo um, prior to the interview. Um, so before we start, um, if I may, I'd just like to pose a question to both of you, which is why construction? So Claire, do you want to kick off? Yeah, I was, um, I studied engineers, engineering. I've got a master's degree in structural engineering. I did um, a short placement in a consultancy firm and then I, um, I, which I thoroughly enjoyed, but then I got my first role when I finished my studying um, on a construction site and I just loved it. I loved the dynamic nature of the construction site, the fact that no two, two days were the same. And also the fact that the enjoyment of finishing a project and seeing the end user enjoy it for years to come, years to come afterwards. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And Alison, same question to you, if I may. Yeah, very similar story, really, um, Maddie. I, I studied uh, engineering based on the fact that I, I enjoyed maths and physics, so I got some good careers advice, was steered in that direction. Um, I was a student sponsored by McAlpine, so I had some work experience. And really, by the end of my first week on site, uh, I knew that I didn't ever want to do anything else. I, I, lo I loved it from the beginning. Thank you. Thank you very, both very much. And I think one of the um, kind of key things that Sir McAlpine was, was stressing at the event last year is the, the um, transferable skills element. So I think, you know, often people that are, aren't in the industry, when you think of construction, they have images of kind of bricks and mortar and, um, you know, hard hats and kind of don't necessarily think about the, um, the, the, the kind of the, the, all the peripheral bits that actually, you know, make, make that happen. Um, so it'd be really interesting as well just to understand a bit more about your kind of unique skill sets really that you bring into the industry. Shall I, sorry, shall I pick somebody? Alison. <laughs> so I think, I think the thing that has been uh, remarkable for me is that um, of the things that I learned at university, it, the, the pure engineering is not what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, what I use much more are the, the management skills that I learned through involvement in university societies, for example. So persuading people to do things, uh, trying to get things done with not quite enough money um, and, uh, and really getting the best out of a team. So um, it, although there are specialist roles within the construction industry, the, there's a huge breadth of, of other roles available, which I think people aren't really aware of. Um, and the one thing that, uh, that I'd add really is that although I'm really keen to get more women into construction because I think that the industry will be better for it, the thing that's quite often overlooked is, is that you should come into construction for you because it really is one of the most rewarding uh, industries to be working in um, and, and the job satisfaction that you get from creating something tangible and being able to walk away and say yeah I built that that you don't get that anywhere else and it's fantastic thank you and I, I mean I, I think that's amazing as well when um, when Linda your head of marketing first talked to me about you two specifically there's a there's a flagship project that I think most people in England would know which is the Battersea power station that I believe you've both you've both worked on um, Claire you um, that was it the first project that you came back on to after maternity leave because I think one of the really interesting things about you, Claire, is that you came back from maternity leave, came back as a flex worker with no issues and were then promoted. And for a lot of women in particular, they come back from that leave and, um, and then don't have the same thing with maternity leave because they're not off for as long. 
um, and they hit a glass ceiling even just mm. by raising the fact that they want to work flexibly and you had the opposite experience so we'd love to know more about that yeah exactly i've been with uh, McAlpine's almost over five years and the first job i had was in, on selfridges i worked on the redevelopment of selfridges flagship store on oxford street and then i went on maternity leave for my with my first child um, and then when i came back i was i was placed in the battersea power station project so initially i didn't know how many days i wanted to work so through my keeping in touch days, I, I started to go back for four days a week um, with the option that I might want to go to five days a week. So McCalp and um, SRM were very happy with that. And I also changed my hours as well, my contract hours. Um, so I started earlier and finished earlier um, and McAlpine were very supportive in that. And then eventually I did actually go to five days a week, but one day from home. Um, and the whole thing was, I mean, they were very supportive from the get-go about my flexible work arrangement. And I had checked in with my manager um, quite often just to make sure that it was still working for him and was still working for me. So it was sort of, it was quite a dynamic process. In the end, it did stay the same. So I worked four days in the office and one day at home. But my hours, I, I then changed my hours. Um, and then I was promoted to chief engineer um, after returning um, from maternity leave. And I also, through McAlpine's as well, I was supported, which Alison was my uh, mentor. I got my chartership. I became a chartered engineer. From Institute of Civil Engineers as well while I came back um, and I'm on maternity now leave now and um, I'm hoping to go back to Battersea again once I finish my maternity leave. That's what an inspiration that's amazing I mean I had my, my first baby and fell over so that's fantastic um, and interesting I didn't realize that, that um, Alison had done that mentorship as well and I know that my, yeah. that my husband's chartered and I understand that whole process and it's rather stressful isn't it so congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. Something that you just said as well that I'd just like to pick up on for our audience, really, because um, our audience predominantly are candidates that are looking for a flexible opportunity. You mentioned about checking back in with your manager, and I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, to kind of own the flexible working arrangement and, and you know, keeping making sure that that works, I think that's really key. Um, so I think that's really valuable what you just said. Because yeah. I think the construction process is, um, is quite dynamic, does change, so site changes, conditions change. So I think that was quite important to have that open dialogue with my line manager to make sure that uh, is it still working for you? Yes, it's still working for me and having that conversation, that honest conversation with each other to make sure it is. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you. And have you started the um, your kind of plan about going back after number two? Are you, are you that far forward? I know you're not you're not quite at the end of maternity leave yet. No, I'm going, I hope to go back end of November. So I am visiting site actually next month and I'm going to okay. have a chat with my, my old line manager there and then to go from there. So it is you, on the horizon. But you feel perfectly comfortable to do that? Yeah, I have to say, I've got a lot of friends that are on maternity leave at the minute, and I think probably I'm the most enthusiastic person about going back to work again, which is good. It's a good uh, uh, selling point for the industry, as Alison's saying. I mean, it's so enjoyable, so rewarding. I actually am looking forward to getting back back in the this, this seat again. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. That's really that's really interesting. Um, Alison, you're, you're another kind of interesting feature. You, you had a nine year career career break um, and then and then came back. And um, I know that you know, the, the way that you, you work flexibly, you've also recruited a flexible team on site. You know, that's unheard of actually in the industry. Um, I'd love to know more about that. Yeah, so I had a slightly different experience from, from Claire. So obviously, I'm a, I'm a bit older. Um, so when, when I first went on maternity leave, um, that was uh, in about 2003. Um, and my, at the same time, my husband's job moved us overseas. So I knew I wasn't going to be able to come back after a standard period of maternity leave. So I, I left McAlpine's. Um, we traveled abroad. Um, when I came back, sort of nine years later I had three children uh, and, I, and I felt that I was ready to go back to, to work when the youngest one started school um, and I, I, was, I was very ready to retrain and go and do something completely different because I wasn't sure that I would be able to work flexibly in the construction industry. Um, but before I signed up for that teacher training course I just felt that I wanted to make a call to McAlpine just to explore whether there was any possibility of me going back to the job that I loved and they were fantastic so um, what what I was told was uh, tell us what hours you want to work and we'll find a role that will accommodate that and that was absolutely fantastic because it allowed me to really think through um, what I was able to commit um, and it really it's inspired loyalty to McAlpine for giving me that opportunity mm. and I think it actually pushed me 
probably to do more hours than I might have applied for if I'd seen a part-time role advertised. And talking it through with my husband, we realized that, that what would work best for the construction environment that I was in was for me to be there every day. Because as Claire says, it's a very dynamic environment on a construction site. You can't really miss two or three whole days in a week. Um, yeah. so I found that doing a shorter day, five days a week, was going to really work for me. Um, and, and that was also working for the project that I was on at, at that time, which was the Bloomberg Building in London, which is a, another amazing project. Um, so while I was there, again, I worked flexibly and, and people just got to know that I wasn't there after three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and it made me massively efficient. I don't think it, it uh, was to the detriment of the, the project at all. That experience meant that when I moved to my next project, which was Battersea Power Station, and I was then in a leadership role, I knew that uh, I wanted to have flexibly working people on my team because I'd seen how effective and efficient it, it, it was. Um, I also knew in that role on that project that I needed to build a team really quickly. Um, the, the way we started on that project, uh, we were six people taking over from a previous contractor who'd had a team of 70. So I couldn't afford for people to say, oh, I don't want to go to Battersea. I needed people to know that it was a good project for, to come to, and I wanted to be as supportive as possible. Um, and it really worked out. You know, I had Claire on my team um, and I, I ended up with 30% of that project team on formal flexible working arrangements. Um, when I left the project, there were uh, 120 people on that team. So that's not a small number of people. You know, we yeah. have 35, 40 people who had some kind of flexible working arrangement in place. Men as well as women, you know, people who had longer journeys, people who just wanted to, to work from home one day a week or who had other family caring responsibilities that they needed to work around. Um, and that is an incredibly high performing team at Battersea. It, it still is. Um, I've moved on from, from the project within McAlpines, but I firmly believe that the success of that project is down to the diversity of the team and the flexible working was a big part of that. that, that I mean, that's phenomenal. I mean, the first, you know, to, to say to your, for your employer to say, tell us what you want to work and we'll find a role that, that works around that is just amazing. And to then be able to ingrain that as well on an, on an on-site team, which is you know, one of the biggest challenges that we hear from HRDs in our other event is all about um, frontline staff. You know, how do you or, or shift workers? How, how do you make that happen? And you've proven that it does work in a, in a really very rigorous health and safety controlled um, environment. So it just it just proves the, the case in point. And um, thank you both very much. Um, we, we deliberately keep these interviews short and sweet because um, people don't tend to watch things for too long. But I think one of the kind of the key takeaways um, for our audience is, is any advice and any learnings from you. You know, we've got people that are looking at returning or looking at changing. They want to grow their career. Um, if you could offer some advice to somebody in, in a similar position to you in terms of coming back from maternity leave or coming back from a career break, not just women, really key what you said a minute ago, Alison, about, you know, flex for all. It shouldn't, I, don't, I genuinely don't think it should matter your reasons. I think flexible working should be available for everybody. Um, what, 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 could you offer, what could you offer, Claire? What would you like to say to anybody in that sort of position? I think to um, sort of to be honest with you and to sort of be honest with yourself and what you can work and I think with the flexible working to make sure that yeah that it works for your employer as well as working with you um, because the fact that you're going to get the best from the person if the person's working with hours and the way they want to work you're going to get the maximum amount of, out of the person so I think just to have that open honest as I said before dialogue to make sure that that I think that would be a big part of it what, what way we, what way you want to work. Thank and you. Then, to do the check-in as well to make sure that it's still working too. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really kind of owning the flexible working piece as well. Thank you very much. And, and Alison, same question. Yeah, I think my advice would really be for anybody who's in a leadership role, who's considering uh, a request from somebody to work flexibly. Um, and, and I think my, my response would be, look, this person obviously really cares about doing that role why why wouldn't you say yes to someone who has taken it on board they've solved their own problems they're coming to you with a proposal just say yes you know <laughs> and and stay flexible yourself you know if it's not working then talk to talk to somebody and change something you know don't don't say no just go go into it with that attitude of of just say yes
Just, yeah, think, no, thank you. I think as well, yeah, I think I changed my hours by about half an hour, but the, the 30 minutes in my world was huge and they made sure I could come on, collect, do dinners, but in the employer's world, they may not even notice that I was not there for the half an hour, but it does, it makes a huge difference for the individual. Yeah, uh, no, ab absolutely. And it's they the half hour, the missing rush hour and the difference between yeah. getting back home and your own kind of mental psyche and, and you know, being in a good place as a, as a parent or whatever reason you need to be back. I think that's, that's really key. That's a really good point. Um, and just any advice for anybody that um, is working as a flex worker in a team of, of people that aren't all necessarily flexing, having Alison, having run teams and, and been that person. Um, I think one of the one of the challenges we've mentioned earlier is the, the glass ceiling and, you know, kind of struggling to manage up almost or to not have people go, oh, leaving at three o'clock, um, which is just so toxic. Do you have any advice for, for both really kind of as, as an employer managing your team and as a employee, sorry, employee managing your team and as an employer managing a team where you've got a mixture of both? Yeah, so coming at it from from my personal experience, I found it was it was important not to not to give way to people's expectations um, and I, I had a, a real light bulb moment when I had a conversation with a colleague where I'd said oh, you know I could really do with that extra three hours in every day you know that sort of three o'clock till six o'clock time and he said Alison I could do with an extra three hours in every day and this was a guy who was working till six o'clock anyhow and that for me was like yeah whatever time you choose to get up and walk out of the door there is always more to do and it's mm. just a question of communicating clearly and managing your workload and and actually on the flip side in a leadership position you can really support your flexible working employees by modeling that behavior so be clear about when you're available and when you're not available and you know get up and walk out at half past five mm. because that gives permission to everybody else in the team that it's okay to go home now mm. Yeah, absolutely. Leave, leave loudly. And, it, and it's, I, it's really, it's great that you two have, that have done that. And I think, you know, as a kind of a, a, um, a movement of people that really believe in flexible working, I think it's really important that everybody joins forces and, and does that and stands up for other people as well. And, you know, kind of wipe out the back chat and, you know, there's no need to make comments about the three o'clock leave and that, that kind of thing. And also, as we all know, we're all, you know, all three of us flex workers, you're so overproductive. It's impossible mm. to switch off, I think. So actually, what a great situation for an employer that, you know, you've got the opposite issue, I think, of burning people out. And um, Claire, same question to you, if I may. Um, sorry, what was the question again? Sorry. So around as a flex worker, um, yeah. any advice around managing that dynamic on a team of people that perhaps aren't working flexibly? I think that's the thing, the same as well, about being the communication, making sure that people know where, where you are and at what time. And also, I think the advice probably is to, to for people to be measured on their output rather than their input. I mean, I know when yeah. I, my hours were curtailed, I was, I didn't have time for a chit chat at the water cooler because I knew I had to leave at half four every day. So I would, was, as you say, overproductive. I just, I started the day like running and kept running until I ran at the, went out the door again at the end of the day. And I think that's the thing is to, for people to be measured on their output and to not be afraid to say that, look, I'm working these hours and to communicate to people so they know when you're there and when you're not there as well. Thank and you. then to, and to respond, if people do make comments as well, sometimes to, kind of, to speak to them and try and change the culture. And I was the beneficiary of being on the Battersea Project that there was that culture there that had, they, they changed the culture, that it was okay to leave at whatever time you were leaving at. And that, and that culture was changed and was from across the board as well. And that, that must be... That must be a really good feeling for both of you to know that you've, um, I know Sir Robert Calpine as an employer are committed to that, but you've really helped that process and really helped that evolve um, so that other people coming into the business now, you know, are, are in a position where they can ask, so which is really powerful. Um, I think that there's something here about you don't have to change the whole world, just change your little bit of it and your behaviour can really rub off on the people around you. So do do call out the little things because mm. slowly slowly that does have a difference on the environment that we're all operating in yeah absolutely i think that's that's such a good point thank you um thank you both very very much for giving up your time and sharing your experiences um i hope to our audience watching at home that that's given you an insight into sir robert mccalpine and into the construction industry and the opportunities that are available um thinking outside of what you may or may or not have done previously um, and also some really great advice around um returning and negotiating flex and making that work so thank you both so much for giving up your time that was really 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 powerful thank you no problem
Thanks. Thank you. And thank, thank you all for watching and we'll see you all soon.